Hello, Mark Crossfield here. Today we're going to talk golf balls. So I was hitting a few shots earlier today and I'm going to show you some data I've collected just from hitting two very different types of golf balls. Um, and we're going to show you a little bit more information about how you should be choosing the right golf ball to help you play your best golf. And maybe giving you a few ideas that you maybe didn't think were out there in the first place. Let's get stuck in. Right guys, golf balls. So, I took today, I've got GC2 HMT here today, so we did, I did some monitoring, um, some testing with it on where I was striking the ball on the face, which this thing does so well, gives me the data, also pass, angle of attacks, all the other data that we've normally talked about. Um, and then it shows me ball speeds off the face and how far the ball goes spin rates, all those kind of things. So I was gonna use that data to show you guys something interesting about golf balls that maybe hmm, might challenge your original thoughts. Look, I've got a DT Solo from Titleist. So, not a premium ball for want of a better word. And then I've got a Titleist Pro V1, the most famous ball I could be out there. So before we carry on with this, out of these two balls, which one goes the furthest? So the DT Solo or the Pro V1? And that's what I'm gonna go out there and test, hit some balls, get some data, and see which one goes furthest to try and maximize, say, my distance. Um, let's show you some of the data. So for the test, I hit my seven iron. Uh, PTS Solo, which I put in PTS Solo, actually DT Solo. I was getting it mixed up with the older ball there. So PTS Solo is the DT Solo here. Um, first set of three balls, 107 ball speed with my 7-iron, 6,100 revs off the face, um, carrying 146 average. Next set of three balls was with the Pro V1. This is the standard Pro V1. Ball speed went up three miles an hour. And then the spin went up 700 revs. And then the distance went up four yards. So on those two tests, the Pro V1 went further than the DT Solo. Um, I wasn't striking those first three so well. I would, there were some of the first shots I hit. So you could see as I went on, I started to warm up. So I thought, look, let's do it again. So I went Pro V1 again. Ball speed, 110, so it stayed constant, launching at 20 degrees. We went down a 6.4 average spin, so 6,484, carrying 151, so 150 to 151. Pretty much the same data as the uh, other set of uh, Pro V1 golf balls. Then we went on to the DT Solo. Ball speed, hit six shots this time, 111. So the ball speed went one mile an hour faster than the Pro V1. Surely a distant ball should be coming off the face faster, you would think, wouldn't you? Uh, launch angle, 21.9, so it launched a fraction higher, but two degrees only, not much in that. And then the spin, 6.2, so the spin definitely was slightly less. Distance, 153, so we're talking two yards extra distance, two yards extra distance from a DT Solo to a Pro V1. Obviously in my head, I would imagine that would be five, seven yards, club extra. Certainly if you talk to people, they think DT Solo is gonna go so much further than a Pro V1. So then I went back um, and I thought, okay, so I was gonna hit some with a driver. Before I continued hitting, I thought, I'm gonna phone tightness up and see what they're take is on it. And they sent me this link to some information that they published reference their ball testing. Titleist was saying between their ball range, and this is the interesting bit guys, is that there's four to five yards difference between each ball. Next to nothing. So distance. Lots of you guys are out there buying your golf ball on distance. You want one to go further. You use the harder covered feeling balls to go further. That's not directly the case. What Titleist was saying, and this makes sense to me, which is why I'm trying to tell you guys, is they're saying if you hit 14 drives in a round, why are you buying a golf ball for those 14 shots when all the others are going to be played approaching to greens, and around greens and on the green? So what they're actually saying, if you want to see the difference in performance with these two balls, driver to 7-iron, you're going to see very little difference, which is what I saw, fraction less spin um, in the iron, so 200 to 400 revs only between the DT Solo and the Pro V1. They said if you get a wedge out and hit some shots, you'll start seeing the difference. So I thought I'd get my wedge, marked it up with the dots, get the GC2 HMT on it, and hit some with a wedge. So let's show you some of those numbers. So here we go, we've got six of each. Pitching Wedge Pro V1, carrying the, a ball speed 89 mile an hour average, and then a DT Solo 88. So I'm hitting them 
almost identical distance in my head. The ball's carried 110 to 111, so one yard further with the Pro V1, so the same, because obviously that's subject to how hard I'm hitting it, strike, those kind of things. So they're going the same distance with pretty much the same ball speed. Now, if you look at the spin, the spin is quite different. We start going up to 400 revs difference on a small shot. And if you look at the highest spinning in the Pro V1, you've got 8,591 revs, where the highest the DT got to is 8.2, with lots of 7,000s, where the Pro V1 didn't get anything in the 7,000s. So there was the spin, which then arguably would lead to the control, so arguably landing softer where the distance stayed the same. So really, really interesting for me that what was happening as I hit these balls is I then went and talked to a couple of pros that I know and asked them what they think about the golf balls and they were actually saying that DT Solo should go loads further. You know, they, they thought DT Solo would go loads further than Pro V1. Um, it, it's such an interesting slight misconception amongst people buying golf balls, isn't it? You should be buying your golf ball around getting the ball in the hole, not getting that extra distance off the tee. Because if you want that extra distance off the tee, the golf ball isn't really going to do that. Then someone else in the conversation that I was talking to mentioned compression. Um, if you go on the Titleist website, there's an article they wrote about compression where actually for the performance of the ball, it makes next to no difference. Um, that it, I mean, the ball isn't compressing on a club face for a start. It's deforming. It's not compressing. They do compression tests by literally squeezing a ball to see kind of the elasticity of that ball. But the compression off a of face, it's making very small differences to none from high ball so club head speeds to low club head speeds. So really interesting numbers there, guys. Let me know what you think. I think when it comes down to buying a ball, if we take a kind of view, let's pretend all golf balls cost the same money. So take cost out of it. So a golf ball just costs a pound. It doesn't matter what golf ball it is. It just costs one pound, one dollar, whatever, wherever you're from. Um, then I think 99% of us, 8% of us, a high percentage of us would all be using the premium ball, the Pro B1 and other such makes, the Nike ones and <coughs> the Bridgestone ones, whatever. You would all be using pretty much the same ball. It would be the people who want to reduce spin, who would be maybe going for the slightly firmer cover balls, not those premium balls. I've heard stories of some tour players going to a harder ball to kind of calm down the spin that you saw with the pitch and wedge, which gives them a little bit more control on the green, so they're not spinning off the green so much. Interesting. So when choosing your ball, you want to be thinking price. You want to stop thinking distance, balls, distance. Tightness are saying they basically make their balls. I'm sure all the other companies do as well. Um, I'm not saying buy tightness here. I'm just, they're just the only people I spoke to. Um, what their tightness are saying is they make their balls go the furthest in the marketplace compared to other competitors. But all their balls, in effect, are distance balls. You're just going to get different spin rates with different clubs uh, across the range. And most of you, I would say, around the green and into greens are looking possibly for a little bit more spin, a bit more control. So if you can afford it, if your game, your leisure activity warrants that better quality of ball, then go Pro V1, but I wouldn't lose sleep if you're still buying DT Solo, it's a great ball, but don't be buying it thinking you're going to get 10 yards down the fairway extra. Uh, what you might do is get arguably a little bit more distance on your second shots with the slight less spin, um, and you ain't going to get the ball zipping back too much, which again bounces on, give it a bit more distance. Um, let me know what you think guys, post comments down below, will you DT Solo goes further, do you still not believe me? Lots of you will find this very hard to believe, I'm sure. Because we've certainly all grown up, me included, thinking that hard ball goes further and a soft ball goes less distance, where actually the, the leading manufacturer of golf balls is saying quite the opposite. Post comments down below, let me know what you think, and I'd love to hear what you've got to say, and we'll speak to you all soon. So if you like what's going on here, don't be afraid to subscribe to the channel, also thumbs up the video, post comments, love to hear what you guys got to say. Let's keep it social, the more we talk, the more we share, the easier this game will get for, uh, for everybody. So if you want to find me on Facebook here, you can find me on Facebook. If you want to tweet me, find me on Twitter here as well. Just follow the links all in the description. Come and join the show. Get active, get involved, get playing some better golf. Thanks for watching.